Gothenburg, Sweden. It's the end of October 2022. Almost exactly on the 16th anniversary of his first individual world championship title, Jason Winyard arrives. It's been more than four years since his last international appearance when a crushing diagnosis stopped him from doing what he does best. Now he comes to Gothenburg to test his skills once again, not without notice. I think it's awesome to see Jason Winyard come back after five years, you know. He was the face of the Tilsimer sport and he still is. Uh, he's just a legend. Ja, er hat neun Titel und das beeindruckt alle auf der Welt und das wissen auch alle, die da mit auf der Bühne stehen. To still be competing against him, um, I mean, it's just uh, truly a, a, an honor and an inspirational moment for me. Je pense que ce weekend, il n'est pas là pour euh, venir perdre, il est là pour venir gagner et puis je pense qu'il va tout faire pour y arriver. Hundred percent, I want to win. The only question left to answer: Can he do it? The individual world champion from 2013, with countless medals under his belt, Australian Brad Delosa also returns with a clear focus and purpose. Yeah, I think it's overdue for another win. So yeah, I'm certainly very happy to be back here at the World Championships in 22, and um, yeah, really looking forward to the competition, and would love to uh, take the gold home. Matt Kogar from the U.S. knows these two more than well. After three silver medals, it's time for him to grab the top spot on the podium at an individual world championship. Yeah, it's about time. Yeah, we're, you know, I'm feeling really good. It's a pretty good resume I've built up over the last several years. I want to add the gold medal from the world championships to that, that resume. And then at the end of the day, if, uh, if it's in the cards, that's what will that's what'll happen. Here at the World Championships in Gothenburg, there are more familiar faces looking for a championship breakthrough. For 21-year-old Swedish champion Emil Hansson, it must seem like a far-fetched dream, considering he is following in his father's footsteps, who was also a competitor at several World Championships. It's a big deal to play and represent Sweden on the home plan. Det är det är roligt att möta de stora grabbarna och han har ju varit och tränat med dem och kolla hur vad de har för teknik och sånt så så det är det är jättestort att tävla mot dem. Uh, it's an incredible sport, it's a magic, uh, it's very cool, yeah. Many in the arena hope to catch a glimpse of Jason Winyard. Yeah, he's already got nine, uh, nine championships going for his 10th one, mate. He's got to do it. What he's come back from, he's he's really like an icon for this sport. I think he's done so much and he does so much for this sport. The man is a beast. I mean, actually, he's this amazing combination of the perfect gentleman right up until the moment he's getting ready to compete. And then the beast comes out. And he is just so powerful, so accurate, so consistent. The endurance that man has shown, it's just, it's just a pleasure to watch. For some, a small miracle has come true. For others, it's an open chance to write their own name down in the history books of timber sports. The Steel Timber Sports Individual Competition. In the first round, all athletes compete in three disciplines. The underhand chop, the stock saw, and the standing block chop. The times achieved will be converted into points upon completion of each discipline. In round one, a difference of one point applies in each discipline. Thus, the fastest athlete received 12 points and the slowest only one point. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. At the end of the first round, the athletes with the lowest scores are eliminated. Only eight athletes make it to the second round. In this second round, the remaining athletes compete in the single buck and the springboard for increased scores. With two points difference between placings, the fastest athlete now receives 16 points and the slowest receives two. The two athletes with the lowest total points are eliminated at the end of round two. Only the top six reach the third round. In the third round, anything is still possible in the hot saw, as an increased score interval of three points applies in this final round. 
The fastest athlete can score up to 18 points at the hot saw, the slowest only three points. The athlete who manages to achieve the highest total score across all three rounds is the new champion. And here they come, Arkadiusz Drozdek from Poland going up against Kern Martins. A couple of legendary hitters here as they come up on stage. Arkadiusz Drozdek coming back from a broken hand that he suffered before the competition. And they both get underway on the first side of their blocks, looking clean and consistent. Both of them chopping with each other. Question is, who's going to move to the other side first? Oh boy, it's pretty even. It looked like it was Kuhn Martins just maybe a hair ahead of Arkadia Strozdek. Ah, oh, but Kuhn Martins gets a bit of a sticky axe there, and that may give the advantage to Strozdek, and he's done it. He split the block, and Drozdek wins this heat by about three strokes ahead of Kuhn Martins. Great job by both of these battlers. And it's getting even louder in the arena. The local hero enters the stage. 21-year-old Emil Hansen facing three-time national champion Danny Martin from Germany. Can the Swedish wunderkin stand the pressure? You could see the look on Emil Hansen's face. There's a bit of nervousness there as they get ready to hit on the underhand chop. And here we go. Emil Hansen getting in there, really big drivers from on high. A bit of a shorter chop cut from Danny Martin on the other side. Who's going to split and move over to the other side first here? Boy, it's looking pretty even, but it's Danny Martin getting to the other side. Emil Hansen struggling on the first side of his block, and Danny Martin with a distinct advantage as Emil Hansen just moved over to the second side of his block, and it looks like Danny Martin's going to take this one down with no problem at all. He might even have a good time. He does, 28-15 for Danny, and Emil Hansen really having problems here on this first discipline of the day. Not an auspicious start for the young Swede with a time of 37.49. Ja, ich bin sehr aufgeregt, aber das ist eine ganz akzeptable Zeit. Da braucht man sich nicht verstecken und jetzt auch den Schwede geschlagen. Das war mein Ziel gewesen. So ist es schön, den Wettkampf zu starten. Now coming up onto stage, we have Martin Roussel from the Czech Republic going up against Armin Kugler from Austria. And they get underway immediately, both of them going for those heavy drivers. You can see the black armband on Martin Roussel on the other side as a, uh, an honor to a beloved timber sports action hero, Martin Komarek, who passed away this year. Roussel to the other side first, but Kugler, you don't mess around with him when he's up there. He's got some experience and some skills on this underhand chop. Looks like he's doing well. Oh, but he got himself caught there with a big sticky axe. And it looks like Kugler's done it. Oh my goodness, 28-25 for Kugler. And Roussel struggling on the second side there with a 33-7-0. Up next, a heat that a lot of people were looking forward to seeing, and it is going to be Christoph Geisler from Switzerland going up against the returning Jason Winyard from New Zealand. How will Winyard do here? There's a lot of tension in the audience, and they both get going right away. Winyard opting to face the audience for his first side. Christoph Geisler starting on the backside of his block, and look at these two go at it. What a couple of warriors. And there you see Winyard on the far side as Christoph Geisler has now moved over to the second side of his block. Winyard already showing the backside of his body to the audience. Looks like he might get through there fairly quickly. Geisler battling hard, some nice big chips flying out, but it's Winyard in 25-82. Geisler still working on the second side of his block, having a bit of a time there with a 32-2-4. A great battle of experience between these two with Winyard besting Geisler today. Ah, ouais, ouais. Ça s'est pas très bien passé pour moi. Je suis pas tellement content de la discipline que j'ai fait là. Après, je suis content parce que j'ai tapé avec Jason sur le, la série. Sinon, bah, maintenant, je vais partir pour la suite et puis on verra bien. That was good. It's a fantastic crowd and good to be back on the stage competing. Didn't really have the cut I wanted, but um, it's still nice to be here and uh, I hope the uh, time holds up uh, for, for a good placing. 
All right, another legend coming up onto the stage in green, Brad Delosa, who won in Stuttgart in 2013. He's going up against Pierre Puybarré, a younger man who's also very adept at this discipline, the underhand chop, and here they go. Both of them getting into it right away. Pierre Puybarré getting some nice big chips flying out of that block, but it's Brad Delosa over to the other side of his block first with a distinct advantage. Puybarré, two big sticks for him, and that's going to cause him problems against a guy like Delosa. Delosa and Delosa with a fantastic time of 20.63 and Puy Barre really struggling to find the flow on the second side and does it in 33.15. Yeah, not too bad, everything went pretty well. You know, the Woody's quite firm, so um, yeah, I was pretty happy with uh, the end of 20 seconds. So. My Cougar's a great hand, underhand cutter coming up shortly, so we'll see how it stands. All right, a battle of the 49th parallel coming on stage now. Marcel Dupuis from Canada going up against America's Matt Kogar. Should be a good battle. And here we go. In sync with each other right off the hop on the first side of the block. Both of these guys very good. Marcel Dupuis has been in good form this year, but it's Matt Kogar moving to the other side of his block first. Dupuis now joins him about four strokes back. Kogar with the advantage here. Dupuis, he's got a good second win, but it's going to be Kogar in 18.59. The fastest time of the day so far. Dupuis in a 22.41. Great job by both of these gentlemen. Oh, I was just super excited to get started here today and uh, the wood was going to be a little bit firm and you guys had to stay with a little bit more, a little longer, but kept the weight on and ended up coming out in the head, so that's, that's the goal. Matt Kogar with the fastest time and 12 points in the first discipline. The runner-up to the individual world championship title three times as a man with loads of experience. He's aware that it's a long road to the title. Over the years, you know, you kind of get that feeling like, okay, is gold possible? And you just gotta, just gotta keep in mind that it's not all about the big win, but you do everything properly that lines you up for that win. Preparation is a big part of a chance to win. Therefore, the American has used his connections gained over the years in the sport. The training with the Swedish team puts him together with the next generation of his own competition, which he himself helped to grow stronger, not without a little bit of pride. I met a great person. I have been over to USA to his family and family. They are very helpful and they learn everything they can. So I am very thankful for it. It's pretty rewarding actually getting to see the progress of Emil. You know, when he first started coming over, it was just underhands and helping him get lined up in that sense. And, you know, Hans has come over before too to get the same advice and um, just watching him progressively get better. And then, you know, you find yourself on the live stream, really cheering him on and keep an eye on what progress he's actually making. And um, I think that in several years, you know, he could be one of the top individuals on, on the podium. Emil might only be 21, but he's been around timber sports all his life, accompanying his dad, Hans Ove, at many of his competitions. Ja, men Emil har ju varit med från första början när jag började. Han var ju en liten kille ju då och har ju följt med bakom stenen, framför stenen. Han har ju sett allt ihop det här, så jag tror att han har lite fördel av det, att han, han har varit med om det här. Emil will have to bring this experience to the stage in the second discipline, Stock saw. Heat number one in Stock saw and a couple of legends coming on stage. Marcel Dupuis from Canada going up against Jason Winyard from New Zealand. Jason is strong in this discipline, working with these saws on a regular basis, but Marcel Dupuis is no slouch, but it's a great transition by Winyard, and his second cookie looks solid with a personal best 10.09, and Marcel Dupuis right there with him with an 11.69. Winyard's pleased by that result. Uh, it's one of the best stock saws I've ever had at a world championship, so uh, pretty awesome to get under 10 seconds, and uh, just shows you the power of the still MS661, and uh, had a good run. 
really needed it after the bad start on the underhand. Next up on stage, Armin Kugler from Austria going up against Martin Roussel from the Czech Republic. Two pretty evenly matched guys in Stocksaw. Here we go. It's a quick start by Roussel though, but it's Kugler with a beautiful first cut. Nice transition by both of them. It's going to be very close between these two. Oh my goodness, how close was that? Look at the times! 10.37 each, Armin Kugler with a personal best. That's going to come down to some official timing with those high-speed cameras. And Roussel enjoys the quicker time. Nice. To, co je pro mě velmi silná disciplína, všechny roky, co dělám timber sport, tak mi jde, protože jsem se vyučil na střední škole hospodářské lesnické ve Friedlandě. A tím, že jsem vyučený v lese a teď učím kluky pracovat s pilou, tak si myslím, že to je pro mě velká výhoda a proto mi to s tou motorovou pilou jde. Jo. Next up, Brad Delosa going up against Kern Martins. Here we go. Ooh, very nice start by both of them. Brad Delosa so clean. He's got that first cookie down, but Kuhn Martin's not far behind him. The upcut looks good for both of them, but it's Brad Delosa with also a personal best. 10.08, Kuhn Martin's with a 10.53. That puts Brad Delosa in the top spot. And both of them taking personal bests after the official time is locked in. Everything went pretty well, you know. The Sox was one of them events that can um, you can muck up really easily. So yeah, good smooth run, no DQs, and I think it was a pretty consistent time. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right, Matt Kogar had a fantastic underhand chop. Can he bolster that with some points here in Stocksaw? Let's see how he does against Pierre Puybay. Oh, a bit of a restart there for Matt Kogar, but he's got a nice thin cookie off the hop. Good transition to the upcut, and it's Pierre Puybay with a quicker cut at 10.21. Matt Kogar with a personal best at 10.41. Both of them taking personal best home here, so this is some good wood for the boys. Uh, just a little bit of apprehension, but on the first cut, I got up to the wood pretty quick, and I was taking a really, really thin disc, and it would have been a big chance just to, just to go with it. Uh, readjusted, but it just went right in the same hole, so I just completed the disc, and it was good. Uh, so I got the points I needed out of the stock saw, but it was a bit of a disappointing run for myself, but it was off to the next event. All right, and coming up on stage now, in the yellow jersey, Emil Hansen going up against Poland's Arkadiusz Drozdek. Everybody in the audience looking for Emil Hansen to do well. Oh, but he's got a restart there, making sure he gets his line well set. Arkadiusz Drozdek with a nice transition should have this one down, but it's a nice upcut by Emil Hansen to catch up. 10.72 for Emil, 9.80 for Arkadiusz Drozdek. Great time and a personal best for the pole. Great job. Det gick ju skåpligt i alla fall. Jag fick Tom i början en gång, men ja, det var skåpligt tid i alla fall. Jag får vara nöjd. Ja, det är jättekul att tävla inför hemma publiken där. De hejar på en jättebra. Det är synd att man inte kan leverera riktigt som man skulle vilja. Coming on stage now, Danny Martin from Germany going up against Christoph Geisler from Switzerland. Christoph Geisler, the elder statesman, always in the mix, really making it hard on all of these young bucks. Danny Martin, the hope for Germany to do well here, and he's very good with this instrument in hand. He's got a nice transition, great upcut. Danny Martin's going to take this one with a fantastic time of 9.76. Christoph Geisler with a personal best, 10.26. But after the official time, Geisler slowed down and Danny Martin has the fastest time of a 9.61. Waren wirklich super schnelle Zeiten und der Druck war doch hoch gewesen. Aber ich weiß, dass ich einer der Besten auf der Welt bin und habe einfach meine Leistung abgerufen. Schuster bleibt bei deinen Leisten, nichts Neues erfinden und es hat gereicht. The confident Danny Martin takes the top spot in the stock saw discipline. Tarostek and Winyard also with under 10 second times hot on his heels. His mistake at the start of the cut cost Kogar the lead while Brad Delosa and Arkadja Tarostek share the top spot overall. For Kugler, Geisler, Roussel and especially local hero Hansen, it's time to rack up some points in the standing block if they want to make the second round. So Christoph Geisler will be going up against Arkadiusz Drozdek, the Swiss man and the pole going up on stage now. 
These two have had head-to-heads many times in the past in varying disciplines, and right now we'll see them going at the standing block chop. And look at that right away. Christoph Geisler powering into this block. He is so strong in this discipline. Arkadius Drozdek, you'd never know. His hand was broken earlier in the season, as he is looking quite good. But it is Geisler moving on to the second side, about five strokes ahead of Drozdek. But it looked like Drozdek cut a little bit deeper on his first side, and Christoph Geisler's got more material to go through on the second side. Could it be the Drozdek's going to take this one down? He does it in 25-9-2. Christoph Geisler struggling on the second side of his block. This was maybe a bit of a tactical mistake by Christoph as he finally will take a couple last blows here to get it down in 49-2-5. Official timing now. It's a 48-9-3 for Geisler and a 25-6-4 for Drozdek. Je pensais que ça passerait un peu comme la stratégie que j'ai utilisée, mais ça n'a pas fait du tout. Et puis et voilà, donc je me fais sortir là. là. Je suis un petit peu déçu sur le moment, mais c'est bon, ça va passer. Ma foi, c'est comme ça, c'est le sport, mais je suis quand même content. Up next, Armin Kugler going up against Martin Roussel. Martin Roussel, this is his discipline. He almost always anchors for the Czech team in the team discipline. And yeah, he's going to give Armin Kugler a run for his money in standing block chop here. Both of them getting right into it. Armin Kugler has the advantage that he's very, very tall and has the accuracy and power. Martin Roussel a little bit behind Kugler as they come to the second side. Now it is going to be a tight one here. Oh my goodness, another close battle as both of those blocks drop almost identically. And we have Martin Roussel getting this one, 26.55, but it's Kugler with a 26.51 a hair faster. Nepovedlo se to. Mělo to prostě upadnout a nechtělo se tomu. Dělal jsem tam malou chybu, že jsem si to zavřel. Mrzí mě to. A tím pádem mám asi poslední šance, aby jsem poděkoval své rodině za to mě podpoře svým sponzorům a kamarádům, kteří mě mají rádi. Brad Delosa against Danny Martin should be Brad Delosa's discipline, but you can't put Danny Martin in a box here. He's been training hard to make sure that he is on point for this World Championship season. Brad DeLosa and Danny Martin both looking very good, but it's DeLosa over to the other side, about two strokes ahead of Danny Martin. Danny Martin not giving up anytime soon though. DeLosa really focusing on those big drivers to make sure he gets through there quickly as possible. Danny Martin struggling. He's got a lot of material to get through and it's DeLosa with a 24-3-2. Danny Martin with a 27-5-9. He's not gonna be pleased with that. That. Official timing gives Brad DeLosa the fastest time in standing block chop. Yeah, it wasn't my best cut, definitely. Uh, the wood was a little bit firmer going into that, and I, I knew it was going to be, so um, I sort of made sure of it, but uh, a little bit faster time would have been nicer, but uh, that is what it is. Kern Martin's coming up and he will go against Pierre Puybarre. And I gotta say, the parity between the athletes coming on stage today has been so close, it is insane. And both of these guys get going looking like they're in sync with each other. Look at that, absolutely on point. A little stick by Pierre Puybarre, but they're moving over to the other side pretty much at the same time. Kuhn Martin's very good in this discipline. Puybarre also solid. It's anybody's guess who's going to drop the block first. There's some nice big chips coming off for both of these guys. Ooh, Pierre Puybarre's block is wiggling, and it is Puybarre just ahead of Kuhn Martin's. 28-3-3 to 29-3-3. One second difference between the two official times. Also just one second. How close is that? No, standing block was not uh, what I expected. I had another plan, but uh, that's how it goes today. So, did my best. We'll see how uh, that we can go to next round or not. We'll see how it goes. The legend, Jason Winyard, now stepping on stage, going up against Marcel Dupuis, a legend in his own right. The Canadian champion looking to 
place his marker on the sport here today, going up against the nine-time champion. That is a challenge in itself, but both of these guys looking good on the standing block, and look at Winyard. That is some beautiful cuts right there. Marcel Dupuis moving over to the other side of his block, about three hits behind Winyard, and wow, Winyard is just really going to town on this block here, and Marcel Dupuis looking good as Dwayne. Jason Winyard, 24-10. Marcel Dupuis on the second side, 28-2-6. He's not going to be pleased with that cut as he is a bit slower than usual for himself. But Winyard looking good here today. It was not a very good cut. Uh, I thought the block was going to come out a bit better than that. And, uh, not that, uh, you know, quite, quite disappointed about my performance there for sure. I could have cut that way better. I had a big knot in the middle of the block, so I broke the axe, but uh, uh, it was a better cut. The timber's been firm, so uh, it's, it's a bit of a test for everyone, I think, and the times are kind of showing that. Coming up on stage now, Matt Kogar going up against that local hero, Emil Hansen. Emil knows he has a challenge on his plate with Matt Kogar, the world record holder in this discipline. Let's see if he can show him really how it's done. Both of these guys looking very good, though. It's Matt Kogar moving over to the other side of his block, well ahead of Emil Hansen. Emil Hansen now on the second side of his block. Matt Kogar, a quick little aim there, and a 15-9-2 for Matt, and that is the fastest time of the day. Emil Hansen still trying to find his way through this block, and he does it in a 24-31. It's a good cut for Emil Hansen, but it may not be enough to get into the next round for the young Swede. Yeah, no, I was feeling really good getting into the standing block. I probably just uh, shorted myself a little bit, getting in the back. But uh, in the end, it went good and came out on top. What do you think will it take in the next few years to be able to compete with the very best in the business? I need to go home and train more, I think, <laughs> and get some experience also on the competitions. That's important. Well, you just saw a glimpse of his talent, Emil Hansen, in the standing block. It's not enough to make it to round two, but the crowd celebrates the young man from which this sport will hear and see a lot more in the future, definitely. With the Swede, Pierre Puybaré, Kuhn Martins, and the veteran Christoph Geisler have to say goodbye to their title aspirations this year. One thousand four hundred and seventy days after his last international timber sports competition, Jason Winyard is officially in the mix for the win. I don't think that's in my mindset that I couldn't win from the age of twelve. That was that was in my mind to want to be the best in the sport. All eyes are not only on his performance but also on his body and fitness. An osteoarthritis diagnosis in his hip left the nine-time individual world champion uncertain whether he would ever be able to return to professional competition. At the lowest of times, it seemed that maybe it was not going to be possible to compete again because the damage to my hip joint was so bad, the pain was unbearable. So eventually I got a hip replacement in 2020 and then slowly made my recovery back. A recovery that proved to be a rocky road before Jason could finally return to the timber sports stage. This journey coming back has not been easy. I thought I could come back in 21, basically a year after the surgery, and it was too soon. Uh, I hadn't kind of adjusted to the lack of mobility and I kind of hadn't built up enough strength in the hip. I guess that pushed me back to the drawing board and I went back and worked on my strength and yeah, was able to win the, the this year's New Zealand Championships. Anyone who knows the competition in New Zealand is certainly aware that it takes a lot to win this one. Even joint favourite Brad Delosa is conscious that Jason is a force to be reckoned with. He's a, a timber sports legend, so I've had some great battles with him over the years, and um, I'm sure you know he's looking for that tenth title, and and probably you know in a lot of ways starting to run out of you know run out of opportunities to, to gain that. So I'm sure he hasn't left any stones unturned with his preparation coming into this, and um, he'll put his best foot forward. Whether he ever wins again will surely matter to Jason Winyard, but everyone who watched him struggle on the underhand chop just to come back with a national record in stock saw and be in the top spot after round one may have seen the greatest victory for the nine-time champion already. Jason Winyard is back for a win. 
you know, it may not pan out how I want it to, but I've really enjoyed the journey and, and I, I really enjoy being in good shape. I know that if I do everything to my best ability, then sure, I'm good enough to win. So there we see the athletes moving on to round two, and we start round two with the single buck, Martin Roussel and Marcel Dupuis will open the festivities on stage here. Let's see how these two gentlemen go as both of these guys quite solid in this discipline, but Marcel Dupuis tends to excel when it comes to the single buck. He's very, very good. Martin Roussel, wow, no slouch here, but Marcel Dupuis with a great time, a season's best, personal best for the Canadian and a personal best for Roussel. Nicely done. Oh, and it's a world record for Dupuis after the official time is set. I don't even think he realizes it yet. Yeah, it was a pretty good cut. Uh, I left a, some on the stage. There's a couple of strokes that I kind of kind of hesitated a little bit, but uh, that's a better start than what I did in the standing block. So I'm trying to build from there and, you know, give it a crack here for sure. All right, Armin Kugler and Danny Martin coming up on stage. Armin Kugler, very, very good in this discipline. The Austrian, so tall, he can use that to his advantage. Danny Martin getting right into it as well. Wow, knuckles to tip for Danny Martin as he's using that entire saw. Looks like he's got a bit of a lead on Armin Kugler, and he's done it. He's beaten the Austrian, and the Austrian making it to the second round for the first time in his career, showing well that he deserves to be here. And Kugler's got himself a personal best with a 14-4-0. Ja, das war jetzt nichts Aufregendes, muss ich sagen. Mein großes Ziel seit circa 2015 ist es, unter die Top 9 zu kommen. Und jetzt ist es endlich aufgegangen. Aber im Springboard werden wir alles geben. All right, up next, Arkadius Drostek from Poland going up against Matt Kogar from the USA. Oh, a huge stick for Matt Kogar right off the hop. That's going to cost him. Arkadia Strozdek keeping the flow going as best he can. Something you don't want to see with the misery whip is those saws getting stuck. Oh, no. And I spoke too soon as Strozdek also got a sticky one. He's got himself a personal best, but those times are not awesome. Ogólnie ciężka konkurencja dla mnie i spodziewałem się, że nie będę w czołówce. Dałem siebie wszystko, zrobiłem to, co mogłem na dzień dzisiejszy. Jakieś tam błędy się pojawiły, dlatego taki czas, a nie inny. Two of the absolute masters in this discipline. Brad DeLosa on the right, Jason Winyard on the left. If there were a battle of titans, and if this were all the money on the table, this would be the tightest race ever. Jason Winyard, Brad DeLosa, both of them incredibly solid in this discipline. <laughs> Holy smokes, how close is that? 12.15 to 12.08, personal best for both of these guys. Unbelievable. And there you go. First and second place in the overall standings after that. Uh, really close race with Brad and uh Great to get out there and race him. He's a fantastic Sawyer and uh, great to be out there on the stage. It wasn't too bad. I had a, little, a couple of little chatters on the backstroke there, you know, which sort of cost me a little bit. And um, yeah, Jason just, just nipped me by not very much, but it's a couple of valuable points, you know, you miss out on. So a little bit disappointed with that. Uh, Martel saw it excellent, you know, to, to get a new world record there. So well done to him and uh, yeah, look forward to the next couple of phases. So a world record in this discipline brings Marcel Dupuis 16 valuable points. Winyard stays in contention with the second fastest time taking the lead just a hair in front of Delosa. Inconsistent performances on the day for Matt Kogar drop him down to third place in the overall standings. Moving on to springboard. Ooh, a difficult discipline on any stage on any day. Martin Roussel up against Marcel Dupuis. 
Important here is to get those pockets set as quickly as possible and not waste time. Martin Roussel getting up onto that first board quickly, but Marcel Dupuis right there with them as they get working on that second pocket. A four hit pocket is optimal, but the guys are working a little bit more here to get that second board placed cleanly. You don't want that board sagging, especially on that top one. And you can see Marcel Dupuis' board sags into position. Doesn't look too bad for him as he's got a parallel board. Meanwhile, Martin Roussel on the other side is struggling to get up onto the second board as Dupuis gets to work on that top block. He's got a distinct advantage now as he's well deep and moves to the backside for those final few slicing cuts. And he's done it in one double o one four. Martin Roussel trying to get through there and does it in one o five six eight. That's a personal best for the Czech. Great job for him. It's something I knew I could do because I've, I've cut faster times in Canada, but uh, it was a good cut and I got to start making some points up if I want to do well at this competition. All right, next up, Armin Kugler going up against Danny Martin. Danny Martin has struggled in the past with this discipline, but he has been putting in the time to make sure that he is absolutely on point with this one. Armin Kugler, however, has a ton of experience here, and both of them setting their boards pretty much with each other and moving into position to set their second pockets. Danny Martin in good position there as he gets his second board in placement, but it's Armin Kugler up on top of that top board first, and Danny Martin comes up about Four strokes now, five, six strokes behind Armin Kugler, and he starts working on that top block. Kugler now with the distinct advantage as both of them have good boards, and you can see the audience out there giving Kugler some of their support, and both of them now moving on to the slicing backside. And there you see, oh, Kugler with a bit of a wrench here to get that top block off at a time of 107.01. Could that go to a judge's decision? Denny Martin with a 110.06. We'll see as we get a quick review of it here. And yes, there is a flag on the play, so we will see Andy Hall head back to take a look at the video review, and we'll get a final call on this shortly as the tension mounts for both of these guys on the stage. And yep, it's Armin Kugler's block under review. On stand A for a potential wrenching of the block. Ja, die Axt ist einfach ständig stecken geblieben. Es ist einfach auch irgendwo die falsche Axt für den Block gewesen. Ich da ein bisschen verschätzt. Man muss sie, wenn sie gesteckt ist, immer rausziehen. Und wenn man eben die Axt schräg rauszieht oder den Block abbrechen würde oben, dann führt das zu einer DQ. Das kann sehr schnell am Springboard passieren. Wenn er nur eine Phase hält, muss sie dann genau präzise rausziehen. Das ist oft eine, eine schwierige Situation. Okay, we've reviewed the video. Both cuts are good. Aber hat sich alles aufgeklärt, kein Problem. Die Zeit ist halt nicht, nicht besonders für mich, bin ich nicht wirklich zufrieden. Aber der Block, und der Block mit der Axt hat halt nicht mehr hergegeben. Well, that was a tense couple of minutes for Armin Kugler, but he is fair and safe as we move on to our next heat between Arkadjas Trostek and Matt Kogar. Oh, and Matt Kogar was right in there quickly with those drivers to get that board placed, and he was fast up onto that first board. Arkadjas Trostek setting his first board, but he's got some mega sag there. It's not that important on the first one, but you want to be able to get those boards in nice and clean. Second board place now for Matt Kogar, as he is so good in these chopping disciplines, and he's already working on that top block, as Arkadja Strostek is struggling to get that board in. Oh, and there you can see he just gets up onto that second board as his lower board pops out and is working on the block, but it's a massive lead for Matt Kogar here, and he should take this one down without too many problems. And he's even gonna be under a minute with a 49-13 for Kogar. Great job for the American as Arkadia Strozdek moves to the backside of his block and starts trying to make those slicing cuts down through and gets a time of 107.56. 
zacząłem odczuwać, bo miałem złamaną rękę przed zawodami. Leciłem się, nie mogłem się dobrze przygotować. Zacząłem czuć rękę i troszeczkę nie prowadzi mnie ta siekiera tak jak trzeba. Ale ogólnie pierwszą deskę źle włożyłem, nie dopchałem do końca i nie trzymała mi dobrze, tak jak chciałem. Well, I just tried to go as smooth as I could, you know, like when you go smooth, you're fast, come out with a good cut. So yeah, that no, was good to come out first place so far. Uh, the next heat, there's a couple guys that can probably beat that time, but we'll just have to wait and see. Again, two legends entering the stage for the springboard, Brad DeLosa and Jason Winyard. Now, they are both big men, so that could be a disadvantage in the springboard, but they have so much experience and so much skill, they could negate that weight factor by just being that good. It's Brad DeLosa setting his first board a little bit ahead of Jason Winyard. Jason Winyard getting up on his board now. Nice to see him being able to scramble up there looking pretty good as though his uh, hip's not really bothering him that much. But uh, I'll tell you from experience, hip is no fun to deal with. Both second boards are in place. Jason Winyard's looking good. Brad DeLosa's is sagging just slightly there as they both get going on that top block. And boy, these guys are so evenly matched up. It is insane. That's what legendary status gets you as now Brad DeLosa moves over to the backside of his block. Jason Winyard just a hair behind him. Let's see who's going to drop it first. Is it going to be DeLosa or is it going to be Winyard? Both these times are not looking super good for them, but it's going to be DeLosa just ahead of Jason Winyard. 118.61 to 120.04. Delosa's second board was not very good though, but he managed to pull it out. And there you see the official times. Delosa still slightly faster than Winyard. I'm a little bit rusty. Uh, couldn't get it off in the back, but um, didn't climb too bad. But uh, I think a couple of years out of competition has uh, been rough for me, but um, still great to be here and uh, looking forward to running the hot tour. Yeah, it was terrible. Terrible springboard, probably one of the worst I've climbed all year, so pretty disappointed with that. And it's, uh, yeah, really cost me a lot of points. So I have to try and come out and make up with the hot saw now, but it's, yeah, pretty hard work, so. So a big shakeup in the leaderboard after the springboard. Roussel and Kugler are out, and all the athletes left in the mix can still take the win in the final discipline, the hot saw. This is still Timber Sports at its finest. It comes down to the last event of the day. The hot saw is an intimidating machine, even for the athletes at a world championship. Every athlete has a unique relationship with this particular discipline. Yeah, the hot, the hot saw is, whew, that's the most unpredictable discipline in the still Timber Sports competition. It's control aggression. That's what a hot saw is, control aggression. Ja, die hot saw is a discipline where man keine Zeit hat zum überlegen. Es ist Gänsehaut pur, ist einfach nur krank. The hot saw is a symphony of mechanical chaos. Brad DeLosa has no doubt about what's at stake as he's experienced the game of emotions in the hot saw many times before. I really enjoy the hot saw and it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of bittersweet really. It's, it's probably won me three Australian championships and um, it's lost me a couple of world championships. So yeah, hopefully this time I can, uh, you know, make amends with that and uh, put my best foot forward and, and put up a good cut in the hot saw. To have a good cut is crucial in the final round. These six athletes who make it to the final know that with the increased points in round three, anything is still possible. Yeah, I think uh, with this format, it's a huge impact. The hot saw is a very important event, so anybody that can make it to the hot saw has the opportunity to, to win it. You have to have a really good hot saw run to still stay in the lead if you're if you're coming up in the lead, or you have to win the hot saw to get in front. You can't just go out and make a run. You have to go for it. That puts a lot of pressure on some people. You know, like that's what makes or breaks a, a competitor sort of a, a double-edged sword there and it's um yeah just highlights the importance of you know having a, having a good hot saw run so unpredictable what's going to happen as soon as you line up to compete in that discipline so nothing can be taken for granted with it and there's some fantastic operators that uh, are going to lay down some pretty quick times so it's 
So that's going to be a showstopper, I reckon, in, in the final discipline. One of those fantastic operators is Germany's Danny Martin. He also knows that many factors need to come together in the hot saw. He has cut the second fastest time ever, 4.84 seconds. Es sind einfach viele Parameter, passt die Säge gut zum Holz, ist die Tagesform gut und dann kann man natürlich an der Hotze alles geben, weil dann habe ich nichts mehr zu verlieren und dann äh, weiß man, dass man mich fürchten kann. Dann äh, haben die großen Jungs Druck. All right, so there you see the list in Hot Saw. Arkadius Drostek from Poland will start us off. He is not using his own saw, he's using a borrowed saw. So that may play a role, but these guys are all so good, they can basically use anybody's saw to really get the job done. But you gotta be comfortable with the equipment. Oh, and a bit of a skip start for Arkadius Drozdek. And a pause in the first cut. Ooh, that's a really thin cookie on the second cut. And a big fat one on the third one. Hopefully those cookies are all complete. We need three complete cookies on the deck. And the judges will look, oh no, and we got a flag on the play. So they're going to expect this really closely. It is under review and they're looking on that second cookie. So it is going to video review and boy, oh boy, you can see that second cookie has a really thin lower cut. That may be a problem for Arkadia Zrozdek. Let's see what the judges say after video review. And unfortunately, it's a disqualification for a cutout disc. Po prostu ryzyko pałem na maksa. Ochocą, który mam pierwszy raz w rękach, nie mam swojego, dlatego no, musiałem jak najszybciej próbować to uciąć i nie, nie kalkulować. Nie udało się, może następnym razem będzie lepiej. Up next, Danny Martin. He is so, so, so proficient with this machine. He knows it inside and out. If it breathes wrong, he breathes wrong. Beautiful cuts. Oh my God, that is a fantastic performance from Danny Martin. 5.33, that is a fast time. Will anybody be able to beat that? Unbelievable, he is pleased with that and so are the German fans. And it's corrected to a 5.19. That is a blistering fast time for Danny Martin. Der Wettkampf ist sehr gut für mich gelaufen. Natürlich ein paar kleine Schlitzer. Als Sportler ist man nie zufrieden. Ja, sei nie zufrieden, sonst bist du nicht besser. Aber ich war überall mit dabei gewesen und habe mich ja, vorkämpfen können. Trotzdem war der Plan gewesen. Bis jetzt habe ich die Bestzeit. Wird sehr schwierig, die Bestzeit jetzt zu schlagen. Von der Sache her bin ich zufrieden. Ja, nächstes Jahr Stuttgart. Ich werde weiter Gas geben, angreifen und da sein. All right, up next, Jason Winyard. He's been here so many times before. Sometimes it's bit him, other times it's been good for him. And Danny Martin on the hot seat looking nervous because he knows there's a solid performer. Ooh, a big hang on top and a delay, a long pause. And oh, just problems for Jason Winyard from the get-go. 8.37, not a great cut for Winyard, but enough for the top spot in the overall, which means he takes over the hot seat for the moment. Oh, my starter cord got tangled up in the throttle mechanism and uh, gave me a bad run, but um, yeah, it's just one of those things that's very unpredictable, the hot saw, and um, I was looking forward to try and lay down a fast time, but uh, yep, unfortunately it all comes down to this, and uh, you can't have a poor performance in the last discipline because it's worth triple points. All right, up next, a man we heard from earlier on, Brad DeLosa, he knows the ins and outs of this particular discipline and he just needs to be solid at this point. Jason Winyard even looks a little bit nervous on the hot seat as DeLosa sets his cuts, looking very nice. That third cut's an important one. Oh, personal best, 577 for DeLosa. And that means he should take over the hot seat barring any unforeseen situations. And he does in fact move into the lead. It's been fantastic coming back to the World Championship. Really love competing here in Sweden. And I'd like to thank all the organizers, thank everyone at home. And uh, I'll be back next year and we'll see if we can get that 10th title next year. Wow. 
Marcel Dupuis coming up on stage now. The nerves are on for everybody. It's anybody's game here. Marcel Dupuis looks like he's got a solid cut going so far. Oh yeah, 592 for Marcel Dupuis, but not quite fast enough to take the top spot. So Brad Delosa, with a little bit of a hike of the eyebrows, tays on the hot seat for the moment. Wow. Yeah, the hot saw. I had a clean run. Um, I wish I would have won a bit faster, but uh, that's that's all I had uh, in me today. All right, so it's down to our last competitor, Matt Kogar from the United States of America. He can take it with the fastest time, but he's got to be solid and good. Let's see if he can do it. First two cookies. Ooh, that is a fat second cookie. Did he get a clean one for the third one? The time is 6.07, and if there's no flag on the play, it's not quite fast enough, and Brad DeLosa should be your champion. Let's see what happens. That is it, Brad DeLosa wins it. Matt Kogar, once again, the silver medalist. How tight can it be? Brad DeLosa takes the title by only one point. Once again, a thriller in the hot saw and the margins were only tenths of seconds. Silver once again for Matt Kogar who dominated the axe disciplines. And in the end, Canadian Marcel Dupuis secures the bronze for Canada with the same points, but the faster overall time as Danny Martin who is sitting in fourth place. Yeah, it was like a roller coaster ride. Like I had some events that didn't not go well at all. And then some event where it went really good. So I'm uh, some, uh, some proud of finishing on the podium again. And I'd like to thank all the family back home supporting me. So I love you all. Take care. You know, I think it's the first time I've ever been uh, the last one to go in the hot sauce. So I'll take that as a pretty good, uh, pretty good start. And uh, you now I know the few things you got to work on for next year and come back bigger and better and stronger. After 2013, the individual world championship title goes back to Brad DeLosa from Australia. Look, it's a great group of competitors. Jason's always there, you know. I think to see him back here is really, really special to be able to compete against him again. You know, I've got to wore the armband for Martin Comrack tonight. Yeah, I'd really like to dedicate this win to him and uh, thank my uh, you know, wife and family back at home. Yeah, real honour to take it out. An unbelievably exciting competition comes to an end. We saw the return of some of Timber Sport's biggest names and upcoming talent that showed the future is bright for the sport. We'll see you in Stuttgart in 2023 for the next Steel Timber Sports Individual World Championships. Take care, everyone, and ciao.